Thank you for stopping by my channel, Tessa Kohler Art. In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to paint a realistic portrait in watercolors. Before getting started with your painting, select your color palette, which I'll walk you through how to do, and do some experimenting on a scrap sheet of watercolor paper. I mixed the 202 Burnt Umber, the 645 Orange, and the 252 Yellow Okra with white to make the skin tone base. For shadows, I used the Payne Gray 703, and to add some color into the cheeks and forehead and in areas where I felt were necessary, I used the 690 Rose Matter Lacquer, and went in and added a white glaze for the highlights and just to blend and make it look nice and smooth like skin. I started off with the eyes, always the first feature that I like to start with, and I began first very lightly, applying the medium very lightly, and gradually going in and intensifying the drama of the paint as I went about the process. That's how you want to work with watercolors, because when watercolors dry, they kind of lose that intensity. They lose that drama and the person I'm painting is wearing makeup and so I wanted to really emphasize like her eyes are very bold and I made sure to incorporate all the details necessary, the specks in her eyes, you know, her eyeshadow, you know, she's wearing eye makeup and I wanted to mix colors to match those hues. And I also went in with a blade, an exacto blade, to create texture in the eyebrows. What you are seeing me do here with the mouth is I'm adding multiple layers and coats of pink and red in the red family because later I'm going to go with the correct hue and right now I'm making sure I don't lose that drama. Just like in a drawing with the nose, you want to think about gradual and subtle transitions between lights and shadows. Here I'm just using the burnt umber and light and dark colors, the Payne's gray and the titanium white for blending. If you need to incorporate a hand into your portrait, with watercolor you can be a little bit suggestive and not too literal. Here I'm just getting the basics down of where light and shadows are most predominant, how they are hitting the hand, and I'm also paying attention to the colors that I see within the highlights underlying the base flesh tone that I mixed at the start of the video. With the hair, I mixed a few colors to get that depth. Then, I went in with an X-Acto blade or knife to create texture and added direction to that texture and to those marks because her hair was up. And her ear, I was very suggestive with lighting and shading smooth transitions. I added lights and shadows in the areas that emphasized her bone structure and for her coat I didn't just leave it white and Payne's gray. I mixed a couple of colors to achieve a broad value scale. I painted the background a dark neutral gray tone which I mixed a couple of colors to get that hue. I added the final layer of lights and shadows to her face and made sure that when the paint dries, those don't fade out. <laughs> 